Jamie Good here. Um, I'm out in the woods and I think this is a really good place to introduce um, my new book, which is The New Viticulture, which came out recently. As you can see, it's quite a big book. Um, and really, I wanted to introduce this now by going through some of the topics that I've included in the book. Um, and there's a lot of material here that I think is unique. Um, it's stuff that you won't find in other books on viticulture. And this is the fruit, really, of me kind of traveling the world for the last few years, visiting wine regions across the globe um, and taking a deep dive into them. So looking at the content page, um, starts off with an introduction and the, the um, chapter two is Woodland Climate of Vineyard, the domestication of the grapevine. This includes the latest research. It shows actually the grapevine was domesticated in two centers and previously we thought it was Georgia and the Caucasus, um, but actually there's a second domestication center at the same time, um, it, which is the Levant, which is modern day Israel, Jordan, Lebanon. And that's actually where the grapevine spread from. The new genetic evidence has shown that actually the Georgian grapes kind of stayed where they were but it was the ones in Israel the Levant that spread across the wine world. And um, there was um, crossing with local wild varieties and the result of that is all the varieties that we know now. Um, then we have a chapter on climate. Obviously climate is a huge issue in viticulture. We're in the middle of climate chaos and that's impacting quite hard on growing grapevines. Then we have a chapter on underground, the hidden half of nature, understanding its importance. When we look around a woodland like this, you see the trees, you see the, the plants, you see the landscape features. Um, and what we see is the stuff that's growing above the ground. But actually what the latest is showing is all the stuff that's going on below the ground is critically important. And it's a very exciting area of study at the moment, looking at the underground interactions of the roots and the microbes. And the, the kind of the key message is um, really, if you want healthy soils, you need to have stuff growing in it. So that's a really important chapter. And the other thing is it delves into this concept of the, the, the kind of the way that trees, the roots of trees and other plants that are interconnected by mycorrhizal associations. And so there's communication taking place, the sharing of nutrient resources. A uh, vine, for instance, will, will deposit up to 40% of its photosynthates, the, thing that's, the food that it's making from the, the light um, through photosynthesis into the soil to feed that underground life because the mycorrhizal associations are critically important in uh, mobilizing and absorbing nutrients from the soil. Then we have a chapter on terroir, really interesting topic. It's one that I've delved into before in quite a lot of depth. I think it's really interesting and sometimes we get a bit too hooked on terroir. Sometimes we make a little bit too much of it, but really the science of, of what's happening in terms of vineyard sites being expressed through wine I think is really fascinating and there's a lot of recent research as well kind of proving the reality of terroir and then we have a chapter on grafting rootstocks fine longevity this is a really important chapter um, because most grapevines that are grown around the world are grafted um, and that graft union is very important and since the 1970s since the invention of the Amiga grafting machine which does basically the grafting in one very automatically much quicker and cheaper to use than anything else and there's a lot of controversy about that Amiga graft and recent research is showing that maybe um, it's problematic. If you want a vine that lasts 100 years, maybe the Amiga graft isn't the thing you should be using. Although most um, nurseries worldwide use these Amiga grafts. And I've went and visited a, a, a guy called Lillian Berion, who's a nursery guy in the Rhone, makes um, vines for some of the top properties in France. Um, he's um, not a believer in the Amiga graft. So we discussed this at length. It's a really interesting chapter because um, you've got to kind of, you know, sometimes things are fashionable, but you've got to kind of dissect the fashion away from the science. Then we have a chapter on berry development and the ripening process. Obviously ripening is a critical issue in viticulture. We want the grapes to be ripe, but not too ripe. But what's appropriate ripeness and, and how is that impacted by viticultural decisions? Then a chapter on yields and quality and the science of old vines. We talk a lot about old vines. We discuss them a great deal. Um, what's the truth here? Um, why is it that old vines are so prized? What's the science underlying that? And what's the science between yields and quality? A um, lot of good discussion there. Then we have a chapter on training and pruning. Really interesting. Lots of different ways you can grow a grapevine. In the woodland, um, the natural environment of the vine, it kind of grows up. Um, it's a structural parasite. It grows up trees, uses them as support. And then when the, the 
canopy of the vine is in light, that's where it produces bunches of grapes because the birds can find them. So we've got to think about the way that the vine grows in nature. What does that teach us about the best way of training a vine um, in a vineyard? And obviously it depends very much on your vineyard site, your location, your climate. Really um, interesting stuff there. Um, then um, a chapter on vine immunity, how disease resistance works. Disease is very important, obviously, in vineyards. You want a healthy crop, you want a healthy canopy to ripen that healthy crop. Um, so what's the nature of the biology behind plant disease resistance? Then we have a really important chapter, which is about breeding new varieties, rescuing old ones. Um, obviously, uh, we're kind of stuck with a limited set of grape varieties, you know. Um, grape variety diversity, there's more than a thousand, maybe three thousand different grape varieties that are grown um, in vineyards around the world. Um, which ones are the best? We're using a, a narrow subset of maybe around 12 widely. And I think the thing is now that we're thinking very carefully about the challenges of sustainability. Um, is it really sustainable to be going through a vineyard 15 times a year spraying plant protection products when actually if you were to breed resistant varieties um, using the genes that are resist uh, that give resistance to these these significant diseases from American and Asian species um, then surely you'd be creating a vineyard that's a lot more sustainable than the current ones we have anyway that's just a little bit um, there's much more to say about this and um, we'll come back to um, the rest of the chapters later